on YouTube. Welcome back to Eastside RC and TMR Performance. Today, y'all, we're going to be taking a look at Brat Dad's car. We're going to be doing some wrenching on that. Brother Tom Jones and Brat Brother, who has these big engines right here, he has asked me to make a brake video for him. So at his request, Brother, God bless you and your family and your friends and all the people that surround you. I am going to share with you guys and for him and his brothers how to do the brakes on the Baja, how to set it up correctly so that it's tight and right without any drag possible. And I'm going to show you guys and explain to you all very thoroughly. So I want you to listen closely because my dad's car here, I've done, made some customizations to it. And when you're doing something different from stock, things change, all right? There are small variables that come into play when, it, when you're configuring these parts back together. So I'm going to show you guys what we're going to be working with, and then we're going to get right at it and get into some wrench action, all right? And I promise this ain't a shelf queen. We are going to grip it. We are going to rip it. I got to fix the pipe issue. That's not going to take long. I'm hoping to get this thing to mom and dad Sunday, y'all. It's going to be 50 to 1 degrees outside. Woo! She wants to rip. Let's get right at the wrenching, guys, all right? First things first, sit this one on this side. Put this one on this side. What, bull body? And then take this piece here, put your brake cam down in there, facing like that with the cutout and your brake pad. Pop it in there like so. Okay, just fit that on there like that. And then put your Put your discs up in here. Now, I like to go ahead and just drop my screws in here. Make sure they're aligned. I got ones a little longer. Goes over here. And this one here. Like I said, see I use this billet piece here for pops because it's better. Only the best for my brat dad. And then we just take this piece right here, your brake caliber, slide it on up in here like so. Okay, now the rear, the, uh, the plate, before we put the plate on, I'm take some rubbing alcohol, clean these holes right here. Because you want these good and clean, see there? You wanna get these good and clean so your Loctite holds. You don't want these backing out, hitting your spur gear, causing you a headache out in the field when you're trying to rip. So make sure the holes are good and clean. After you run it through there, you should have a dirty side and a clean side. All right, now when that dries, you can put your Loctite on your screws in a second. First, we're gonna fit the plate. Now, like I said, when, when you're using all stock components, it just usually goes back together nine times out of 10 with a stock plate. You can just slide it right on there. Well, this stock plate, if you notice, when I put it on, okay, hitting the gear a little bit. When I go to slide it on, it wants to hit the gear. It's not, I need to finagle it. 
to get it on, okay? And if you notice, see the gap here that it's leaving? The inconsistencies in this plastic piece sometimes cause an issue. Sure, I could shim it maybe, but I don't want to because I don't like how it fits over here as well. So this plate, when I put it on, it calls the bind. I can feel a hindrance. So I couldn't use it. And I check it. You want this to free spin nice and free. So then I tried the vertigo piece. I tried to fit it on. It was super tight. That same thing. Hit the gear a little bit. It goes on. But it's just not quite right. It's a little too tight and it and it's and it's hitting the gear over here. It's causing some finagling. There could be some inconsistencies in this piece right here. Who knows? It's Chinese. Can't give it too much credit. Another thing I noticed once I got this plate on was this bearing is so far out, even though it's fully seated, that it was causing the spur gear to not want to fully go on. So, not worrying. Don't let it be a headache, okay? It's still fun. This can be aggravating. You just got to keep trying when you're using different things, okay? I'm using a King Motor transmission, roving part here. There's differences, Okay, you're going to run into some issues when you're using parts that aren't stock. Your gear plate, no matter what you're using, stock, modified, or whatever, see how that misses the gear there? It should slide on just like this. Just like that and not be any kind of issue. Okay? Still a small gap here, but that's okay. It will close up and still roll. And still roll nice. The other one, when I closed it up, it didn't want to roll. So, now that we've got this good to go, we got this billet piece already pre-cleaned. We're going to go ahead and get this thing Tighten down. When you're tightening these two screws here, again, there should be no bind. It should just tighten right up, nice and easy. I like to just get them snug, not, not, not fully tightened yet. And it's much easier without the side pipe. <laughs> that thing was right in my way. All right, now no Loctite here, as you can you see, because we put brand new lock nuts. Just put these back in here. see that draw up some stop you don't want to get that super tight and as you're tightening it you want to keep rolling and checking right rolling and checking or else you could cause a bind here now that we've got this semi snug we're gonna take the bit out to drill 
We're gonna hand snug as well as turning it. Looking pretty darn smooth to me. Now we can go ahead and lock tight up and get these in. You see my lock tight here? Look on the concave part, the beveled edge. You can put a little lock tight there as well. that snugged up and watch look at your plate make sure you look at it that this from this angle and make sure there's no no crooking going on that's looking pretty good for extra security I like to drop in my T-handle and put it on here and give her a little cinch. Okay, super tight and right. Now, if you look over here, on this side, it's not fully seated. See this gap right there? That's a one millimeter gap. So we simply are gonna take a one millimeter shim and fit it back there. See the thickness? Perfect. This one millimeter shim will just slide right back in here beautifully. See there? Now it's perfectly spaced. That way, when this plate is fully tightened down, it's not crooking or causing anything to get kitty wampused. Because if you bind this in any way, shape, or form, you crook it, kitty wampus, in any way, shape, or form, it binds the slave shaft, and you don't get this buttery smooth operation, all right? That's what you're looking for, buttery smooth. Now we can go ahead and put the screw back in here with some Loctite and get her cinched all down, tight and right. Don't forget to alcohol clean your screw as well. And what so many forget, don't forget your little rubber dust booty. All right, we like booties. Also your spur gear spacer. Can't forget that one, son. Dad's running stock gears because he don't want to go too super fast. Okay, get your gears on, check it. Make sure. Oh yeah, yeah, he just wants to keep them on rolling. That's what I call ultra free. Very nice. I'm super happy with that installation. I'm gonna go ahead and put the C clip on there. Now for the linkage piece. I'm gonna take that all the way out because you're gonna to wanna to put some Loctite on that as well. Man, I thought I'd turn that stupid dryer buzzer off. All right, 
just want to slip this on through here like so. I like to get the rod right here in between the clutch housing and the engine spaced nicely. All right, guys, there is the finished product. Wrap Dad's car is all done. It's widened and totally hooked up. Got all the rust cleaned off the pipe right there and shined it up with some CRC 656. The whole car is tight and right. Steering, everything. It's fully ready for Brat Dad to enjoy. Look how buttery smooth it rolls. I'm gonna power it up and hit the brakes and you guys can see how nice it stops and steers. The, the, the tightness and rightness of this steering, oops. I turned it on without the radio. <laughs> Super B did its job though, didn't it? There you go. How about that? This steering servo turns slow, which is good. Good for dad, because we don't want it turning too fast and having him wreck it. It's still not bad. That's what you want fast, is uh, throttle. All right, check his brakes out. Stoppage. Free right up, okay? No binding whatsoever. That's what you want. Look how it looks like the one wheel is going the other way when you spin it real fast. But I can assure you that is a true posi track diff I have got set up in there for pops. All right, so that's it, y'all. That's going to going to conclude this video. As you can see, it's not hard to do the brakes. And when you do it right, everything should roll buttery smooth. That's what you're trying to achieve here. Buttery smooth. You don't want any power loss at all. You don't want any dragging going on because that also burns the clutch out as well. Couple that with a bad tune and you will smoke your clutch and fry your seals. All right, so there you go. Y'all have a blessed one. I'll see you on the next one. Eastside RC and TMR Performance is out.